Hey folks, welcome back to part two of this series. In part one, I showed you how to synchronize OpenShift content, the installation content onto, um, onto, a, onto an internet connected sync host, move it across into a disconnected environment and then do a disconnected cluster installation process. This version in part two, we're going to now look at doing a cluster upgrade process so that we can take our cluster from version 4.6.1 to version 4.6.4. In order to get this started, We'll go back to our dashboard and you can see here, again, this is the dashboard that we had before. The question you might have is, how do I know that I can go from version 4.6.1 to 4.6.4? Now, OpenShift upgrades have this concept called a graph. In other words, versions that I can go from and to. And there are different ways to visualize this, but I like this particular one here at github.io. This here is the stable 4.6 channel. If you drop this down, you can see all the different versions of OpenShift that are available. I'm on the stable channel, and so I'm currently on 4.6.1. And you can see that both .3 and .4, in fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. Here we go. The .3 and .4 are both available. And you can see I've got these arrows that go from 4.6.1 to 3 and to 4. And that means that according to OpenShift's engineering teams, that it is safe for me to upgrade from .1 to dot three or to dot four. So I'm not going to go via dot three. Instead, I'm just going to take straight from 4.6.1 to 4.6.4. So now what we'll do, we'll go back into our terminal. And if you saw part one, I have a little release mirroring script that just pulls down all of the content and stashes it in a directory for me. I'm going to do exactly that same process again, except this time I'm going to mirror 4.6.4. So here we are on our, this is on our disconnected helper node. I want to go back to my connected sync host because I'm going to pull it down from the internet. Now, again, if you haven't seen it, here is my basic little release script. I do two things. The first one is to try and pull down essentially a dry run of the installation of the installation media purely because this generates some of the content that I need for install config.yaml. Then I have this second OCA, OCADM release mirror. This is what actually downloads the images down into disk, specifically into this root mirror OCP release directory for me. And then lastly, I've got two wgets here that are pulling down the versions of the OpenShift client and the OpenShift install client that match the release that I am about to mirror. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this script again. And I'm going to go 4.6.4 because I know 4.6.4 is good. Now, again, I'm going to skip forward a little bit for this because this process just takes a couple of minutes to go through. So I'll see you just after the jump. Okay, so OpenShift 4.6.4 has now been mirrored and it now lives in my mirror directory on the file system under OCP release alongside the blobs and all of the content for version 4.6.1. Let's take a quick tour into this config directory that you see under here because I want to show you two of these files. Now, these two YAML files here, they're config maps. And in those config maps contains the signature information for the version of OpenShift that you're looking to install. Now, I know that this one here, D782, this corresponds to 4.6.1. And 6681 corresponds to version 4.6.4. We just crack it open. A little bit hard to read, but you can see it's a config map. It's got metadata, it's got a name, and it's got some signature information. Why do we care about this? We care about it because in your disconnected environment, you will need to OCP create that config map before you tell the cluster to upgrade. Without this config map, the cluster version operator has no way of verifying the authenticity of the release payload. And so unless you tell it to force, it will refuse to accept the release image because it will say something along the lines of, I can't verify the, authentic the authenticity. So what we're gonna do is I will make sure that that comes across into my disconnected environment. And while we're here, if you saw part one, this would normally be the step where you would take all the contents of that directory, stick it on removable media, and then transfer it to your air gap system. I don't have an air gap, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use rsync to bring it across into my environment. This is just unique to what I do here. You probably will do something very different. Like I said, you might have um, removable media, or you might be lucky and have a data diode. Unsurprisingly, this is one I prepared earlier, so the rsync was pretty fast because all of the content I had already previously mirrored it. So what I'm going to do now, I'll jump over here onto the helper disconnected node, and we will have a look at some of that mirrored content. Disconnected content for me is all located, located rather under mirror OCP release. It's 
all their config directories that have my SHA-256 config maps, they're all there as well. If you saw part one, you know that I've got a little Docker registry that's running on this host. I need to now push all of those containers from the file system into the registry. And for that, I have my little upload release script, which is using exactly the same command that you'll see in the documentation, OC image mirror from this location on the file system, target a given set of tags for an OpenShift release, and then push it here to my local registry that's running on this node. This is where you would put instead the address of your corporate registry if you had such a location in your disconnected environment. I'm now going to turn around and we're going to upload this. Let's see if it helps if I can type. I'm going to upload version 4.6.4. This will take a little bit of time because I haven't yet uploaded it. Um, but what I will do is I'll start this process. I will catch up with you after the jump and then I'll show you what you need to do next. Okay, we're back again and OpenShift 4.6.4 is just mirrored into my registry. So what have we done? We downloaded it on the sync host. We've copied it into my disconnected environment. I've now pushed it into my registry. The next thing I need to do is I need to create my signature config map so that the cluster can verify the release payload. And then I just need to trigger the update. So if you remember, we go back into mirror. I had it here in its config directory. Now I know that it's signature SHA-256-6681 that I want. Depending on what version of OpenShift you're using, uh, you may have a slightly different version. Uh, I didn't show you earlier in the video, but the output from OCADM Release Mirror will tell you what the name of the file is that contains the signature in it. So all I'm going to do here is I'm first going to export kubeconfig to my cluster. And then what I'm going to do is let's just make sure I'm logged in. I am, and I'm simply going to OC create F signature SHA-256-6681. That's all I have to do. And now that, that release payload signature is in the cluster, the cluster version operator can read it and now verify the integrity of the release payload. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract version 4.6.4 of the OpenShift tools. And the reason for that is I want to get this. I want to get the release image for version 4.6.4 because I'm going to tell the cluster using the command line, you need to upgrade to this particular version. Now, previously in the history, I have exactly this. It's OC ADM upgrade, allow explicit upgrade because I'm essentially telling it what version to go to. And the release image is this one right here. Now, normally, well, actually, if you didn't use or you didn't create that signature file, you will find that the cluster refuses to upgrade eventually because it will say, I can't verify. You can get around that by adding the force parameter, but it is a lot easier and a lot safer to simply create the signature config map ahead of time. So OCADM upgrade to the version 4.6.4 release image. It'll give me a warning. It's not one of the available updates. That's purely because it can't talk to the upstream um, update service. And so I say, yep, I want to explicit upgrade to this version. This is the release image. And now what I'm going to do for you here, I'm going to go back to our dashboard. I'm going to go back to our overview page. You can see straight away I've changed. The cluster status is now updating. Go down to administration. We go to cluster settings. And hey, you can see update to version 4.6.4 is in progress. It'll do all the cluster operators first. Then when it's finished, it will go and do the control plane nodes. I don't have any worker nodes in this one, so there's nothing for it to do. I won't sit here and bore you with watching a cluster update in the background. It's kind of like watching paint dry, but that is all that you have to do to do an upgrade in a disconnected environment. Mirror the release content to disk, copy it into your environment, use OC image mirror from there to push it into your destination registry, create your signature config map in the cluster so that the cluster can verify the release payload, and then use OC ADM upgrade to trigger the upgrade to your desired release image. Now, all of this is in our documentation under, let me find it, updating clusters, updating a restricted network cluster. And it's reasonably short and essentially tells you all the same steps that I did. Prepare the host, configure credentials, mirror it, generate the image signature config map, do the upgrade, and you're done. So with that, I'm gonna let this run in the background. And when it's finished, we'll be on a 4.6.4 cluster and I will see you then for part three, where we look at um, building an operator hub catalog that will work in our disconnected environment.